this key, this golden thread that weaves through the tapestry of all creation, is none other than the control of, of your feelings. Yes, my beloved, the mastery of your emotional state is the cornerstone upon which a full and happy life is built. Now, you may ask, Neville, how can this be? How can something as simple as controlling my feelings lead to such profound changes in my life? And to that I say, simple. But in its simplicity lies its power. For the greatest truths of the universe are often the most elegantly straightforward. Let us begin our journey of understanding by first recognizing a fundamental truth. The world you see around you, the circumstances of your life, the very fabric of your reality, all of it is but an outward projection of your inner state. Your feelings, your emotions, are the colors with which you paint the canvas of your existence. And just as a painter chooses his palette with care, so too must you select the feelings that will shape your world. Imagine, if you will, two individuals facing the same external circumstances. One approaches life with fear, doubt, and anxiety. The other faces the same challenges with confidence, faith, and joy. Who do you think will navigate these waters more successfully? Who will emerge victorious, having turned obstacles into opportunities? It is without doubt the one who has mastered the art of controlling their feelings. But let me be clear, my friends. When I speak of controlling your feelings, I do not mean suppressing them or denying their existence. No, that would be akin to trying to hold back the tide with your bare hands. A futile and ultimately destructive endeavor. Instead, what I propose is a conscious cultivation of desired feelings. A deliberate choice to inhabit emotional states that align with your deepest desires and highest aspirations. Consider for a moment the feeling of success. Close your eyes if you will, and imagine how it feels to have achieved your greatest ambition. Feel the surge of pride, the warm glow of satisfaction, the electric thrill accomplishment coursing through your veins. This feeling, this emotional state, it is not merely a result of success, but it's very precursor. By inhabiting this feeling now, in this very moment, you are setting in motion the forces that will make your success a tangible reality. You see, my dear listeners, the universe responds not to your words, not to your actions, but to your feelings. Your emotional state is a vibration, a frequency that resonates with the infinite intelligence that permeates all of creation. When you consistently maintain a feeling of success, of abundance, of love, you are tuning yourself to the very frequency of these experiences. And like attracts like, does it not? Your feeling of success attracts success. Your feeling of abundance attracts abundance. Your feeling of love attracts love. Now I can hear some of you thinking, but Neville, how can I feel successful when I'm surrounded by failure? How can I feel abundant when my bank account is empty? How can I feel love when I'm alone? And to you, I say here lies the great secret, the magical transformation that you must undergo. For it is not your external circumstances that must change first but your inner world. You must learn to feel the reality of your desire now, in the present moment, regardless of what your physical senses tell you. This, my friends, is the art of living from the end. It is the practice of inhabiting the emotional state of your wish fulfilled, even before it manifests in the physical world. For remember, what you see around you is but a shadow, a reflection of past thoughts and feelings. Your present feeling, it is the substance from which your future reality will be molded. Let me share with you a profound truth that has the power to revolutionize your life. Imagination creates reality. Your imagination, coupled with the feeling of the wish fulfilled, is the most potent creative force in the universe. When you can vividly imagine your desire and simultaneously feel the emotions associated with its fulfillment, you are engaging in the highest form of prayer. You are declaring to the universe, this is who I am. This is what I feel. This is my reality. But remember, my dear friends, this is not a mere mental exercise. It is not enough to simply visualize your desire or to intellectually affirm its reality. You must feel it. You must become so absorbed in the feeling of your wish fulfilled that it becomes your dominant emotional state. This is the true meaning of faith. 
not a blind belief in something outside of yourself, but an unwavering confidence in the reality of your imagined state. As you begin to master this practice, you will notice a remarkable shift in your life. The world around you will start to rearrange itself to match your inner state. Opportunities will arise seemingly out of nowhere. People and circumstances will align themselves to support your new reality. And all of this, my beloved listeners, stems from your ability to control your feelings, to consciously choose and maintain the emotional state of your desire fulfilled. Now, I understand that this may seem challenging at first. After all, we have been conditioned since childhood to react to our external circumstances, to let our feelings be dictated by what we see and hear in the world around us. But I assure you, with practice and persistence, you can reverse this process. You can become the master of your emotional state, and in doing so, become the master of your destiny. Start small if you must. Begin by consciously choosing your emotional response to minor events in your daily life. When faced with a challenge, instead of automatically feeling frustrated or overwhelmed, choose to feel confident and capable. When interacting with others, instead of defaulting to judgment or criticism, choose to feel compassion and understanding. As you practice this emotional mastery in small ways, you will build the strength and skill to apply it to larger aspects of your life. Remember, my friends, every great achievement, every monumental change in human history began with a feeling. The Wright brothers felt the exhilaration of flight before they ever left the ground. Martin Luther King Jr. felt the reality of equality and justice before it was manifest in society. Every inventor, every artist, every revolutionary first felt the reality of their vision before bringing it into physical existence. You too have this power. You too can shape your reality through the mastery of your feelings, but it requires dedication. It requires practice, and above all, it requires faith. Faith in the power of your imagination, faith in the law of assumption, faith in your own divine nature as a creative being. As we delve deeper into this transformative truth, I want you to understand that the control of your feelings is not about forcing yourself into a state of perpetual, artificial happiness. It's about aligning your emotional state with your deepest desires and highest aspirations. It's about choosing feelings that serve your growth, that propel you towards your goals, that resonate with the person you wish to become. Consider for a moment the vast spectrum of human emotions. Each feeling, from the depths of despair to the heights of ecstasy, carries its own unique vibration, its own energetic signature. When you understand this, you begin to see that your emotional state is like a radio tuner, constantly broadcasting to the universe and simultaneously receiving on the same frequency. If you consistently tune yourself to feelings of lack, of fear, of unworthiness, then these are the experiences you will attract into your life. But when you consciously choose to tune into feelings of abundance, of love, of confidence, even in the face of contrary evidence, you are setting the stage for these experiences to manifest in your physical reality. This, my dear listeners, is the essence of what I call the law of assumption. It states that if you assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, if you persist in this assumption, it must become fact in your world. This is not mere positive thinking or wishful daydreaming. This is a fundamental law of consciousness, as real and immutable as the law of gravity. Now, you might ask, Neville, how can I assume a feeling that seems so contrary to my current reality? And to that, I say, through the power of your wonderful human imagination. Your imagination is the bridge between your current state and your desired state. It is the workshop in which you can craft any feeling, any experience, any reality you wish to inhabit. Close your eyes for a moment then, and imagine yourself as the person you aspire to be. See yourself living the life you desire, but don't stop at mere visualization. Feel it. Feel the confidence in your step, the joy in your heart, the peace in your mind. Feel the texture of the clothes you're wearing, the warmth of the sun on your skin, the love in the eyes of those around you. Make this imaginal scene as vivid and as real as you possibly can. As you do this, you'll notice something remarkable. For a brief moment, 
Your body responds as if this imagined scene were actually happening. Your heart rate might change. Your breathing might shift. You might even feel a smile tugging at your lips. This, my friends, is the power of controlled feeling in action. In that moment, you are literally rewiring your subconscious mind, aligning it with the reality of your desire. The key is to return to this feeling state as often as possible. Make it a daily practice, a sacred ritual. The more you inhabit this feeling, the more natural it becomes until it replaces your old emotional patterns entirely. This is how you begin to live from the end, to experience your desire fulfilled in the present moment, regardless of external circumstances. But let me warn you, my beloved listeners, this practice will challenge you. The world around you, conditioned by your past thoughts and feelings, will initially seem to contradict your new assumption. This is where your faith must be unshakable. Remember, what you see in the physical world is the effect, not the cause. Your feeling is the cause. And if you persist in your new emotional state, your world must reshape itself to match it. Think of it like this. Your current reality is like a movie projector, constantly projecting images based on the film of your past thoughts and feelings. But you have the power to change the film. By consistently assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled, you are creating a new film. And though the old images may continue to play for a while, if you persist in your new assumption, the projector must eventually show your new film. This persistence in the face of contrary evidence is what separates those who truly transform their lives from those who merely dabble in these teachings. It requires a certain mental toughness, a willingness to stand firm in your chosen feeling state, even when the whole world seems to deny it. But I assure you, my friends, this persistence is the very thing that will ultimately bring about the change you seek. Now, let us address a crucial point. Some of you might be thinking, Neville, this sounds like self-deception. Aren't we supposed to face reality as it is? To that, I say, what is reality? Is it not simply a reflection of consciousness? The world you see is not an objective, fixed thing. It is a malleable, responsive mirror of your own inner state. When you truly understand this, you realize that assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled is not self-deception at all. It is, in fact, the most honest and authentic way to live. For in doing so, you are aligning yourself with your truest desires, with the highest version of yourself. You are declaring to the universe, this is who I really am. This is what I'm capable of. This is the reality I choose to inhabit. Moreover, by controlling your feelings in this way, you free yourself from the tyranny of external circumstances. You no longer allow the ups and downs of daily life to dictate your emotional state. Instead, you become the conscious creator of your own inner world. And by extension, your outer reality? This emotional mastery has profound implications, not just for your personal life, but for your relationships, your career, your health, every aspect of your existence. When you consistently inhabit positive emotional states, you become a magnet for positive experiences. People are naturally drawn to those who radiate confidence, joy, and inner peace. Opportunities seem to arise effortlessly for those who maintain a feeling of abundance and success. But remember, my dear friends, this is not about putting on a false front or pretending to be something you're not. It's about tapping into the deepest truth of your being, recognizing that you are not limited by your past or your current circumstances. You are a divine, creative being, capable of shaping your reality through the power of it. As we continue our exploration of this transformative principle, I want you to truly internalize the profound responsibility and power that comes with the control of your feelings. Every emotion you experience, every feeling you cultivate, is a seed planted in the fertile soil of universal consciousness. And make no mistake, my friends, every seed will grow. Every feeling, whether positive or negative, will bear fruit in your life. This understanding places the reins of your life firmly in your own hands. No longer can you blame circumstances, other people, or fate for the conditions of your life. For you now know that these external factors are but reflections, echoes of your own inner state. This realization can be sobering, even daunting at first. But I assure you, it is the most liberating truth you will ever encounter. Consider for a moment the implications of this. If your feelings create your reality, 
Then by mastering your emotional state, you gain the ability to create any reality you desire. Want to be wealthy? Cultivate it and maintain the feeling of abundance. Desire perfect health. Inhabit the feeling of vitality and well-being. Seeking a loving relationship. Live in the emotion of being deeply loved and cherished. But here's a crucial point, my dear listeners. The control of your feelings is not about forcing yourself to feel positive all the time. It's not about denying the existence of negative emotions or suppressing your natural responses to life's challenges. Rather, it's about consciously choosing which feelings to nurture and expand and which ones to acknowledge and then release. Think of your emotional landscape as a garden. Negative feelings, fear, anger, jealousy, resentment, these are like weeds. They will naturally arise from time to time, and that's okay. Acknowledge them, understand where they come from, but don't water them. Don't give them your energy and attention. Instead, focus on cultivating the flowers of positive emotions. Love, joy, gratitude, peace. These are the feelings that will create the beautiful, abundant garden of life experiences. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Neville, isn't this just positive thinking? I've tried that before, and it didn't work. And to that, I say, what I'm describing goes far beyond mere positive thinking. Positive thinking often remains at the surface level of the mind. A thin veneer over deeper, conflicting beliefs and feelings. What I'm advocating is a complete reformation of your emotional and mental state, a fundamental shift in your sense of being. When you truly master the control of your feelings, you don't just think positively, you become the embodiment of your desired state. You don't just affirm abundance, you feel abundant to your very core, so much so that the idea of lack becomes as foreign to you as the idea of wealth might have once seemed. This level of emotional mastery requires practice, dedication, and above all, awareness. You must become acutely aware of your feelings at all times. Notice the subtle shifts in your emotional state throughout the day. When you catch yourself slipping into negative feelings, gently but firmly guide yourself back to your chosen emotional state. One powerful technique for maintaining your desired feeling state is what I call living in the end. This involves mentally and emotionally inhabiting the state of your wish fulfilled, not just occasionally, but as a constant way of being. If your desire is for financial abundance, for example, you would consistently feel and act from the state of being wealthy, regardless of your current bank balance. This doesn't mean being delusional or ignoring practical realities. It means understanding that your current physical circumstances are the result of past thoughts and feelings, and that by changing your emotional state now, you are laying the groundwork for new circumstances to manifest. Living in the end requires a certain mental discipline. You must be willing to deny the evidence of your senses when it contradicts your chosen state. This can be challenging, especially at first. The world around you, conditioned by your past assumptions, will seem to argue against your new state. This is where persistence becomes crucial. Remember, my friends, the physical world is slow to change, like a large ship turning in the ocean. Your new feelings and assumptions are like the rudder of that ship. At first, you may not see any change in direction. But if you persist in your new state, maintaining your chosen feeling regardless of appearances, the ship of your life will inevitably turn to match your inner direction. This persistence in the face of contrary evidence is what separates those who truly transform their lives from those who merely dabble in these teachings. It requires faith, not blind faith in some external power, but faith in the law of consciousness, faith in your own divine nature as a creative being. As you practice this emotional mastery, you'll begin to notice subtle changes in your life. Perhaps people will start treating you differently, responding to the new vibration you're emitting. Opportunities may arise that align with your desired state. You might find yourself making decisions and taking actions that you wouldn't have before. Actions that lead you closer to the manifestation of your desire. These early changes are crucial signs that your new emotional state is taking root. They are confirmations that the law is working, that your controlled feeling is indeed shaping your reality. Acknowledge these signs. Be grateful for them. 
For gratitude is one of the highest vibrational states you can inhabit. But here's a key point, my dear listeners. Don't become attached to these early manifestations. Don't start questioning or analyzing how your desire will come about. This is a common pitfall that can actually hinder the full manifestation of your desire. Remember, your job is not to figure out how your desire will manifest. Your job is simply to maintain the feeling of the wish fulfilled, to live in the end, and to let the infinite intelligence of the universe take care of the how. This brings us to another crucial aspect of controlling your feelings. Detachment. True emotional mastery involves being able to maintain your chosen feeling state without being dependent on external circumstances. It's about finding the source of your desired feelings within yourself, rather than seeking them from the outside. For instance, if your desire is for a loving relationship, you would cultivate and maintain the feeling of being loved, cherished, and appreciated. But, and this is crucial, you would not attach this feeling to any specific person or outcome. You simply inhabit the state of being loved, knowing that this feeling consistently maintained must draw its physical equivalent into your life. This detachment can be challenging, especially when we have strong desires. Our human tendency is to fixate on specific outcomes, to try to control every aspect of the manifestation process. But this attachment to outcomes often creates resistance and delay. It introduces doubt and anxiety, which are feelings contrary to our desire. Instead, cultivate a state of joyful expectancy. Feel the naturalness of your desire fulfilled. Know that what you've assumed in your imagination and feeling must come to pass, but remain open and flexible about the form it may take. The state of relaxed confidence, of faithfully expecting your good while being detached from specific outcomes, is one of the most powerful creative states you can inhabit. Now, beloved friends, as we delve deeper into this practice, I want to address a question that often arises. Neville, what about when bad things happen? How can I control my feelings in the face of tragedy or loss? This is a profound and important question, for it touches on one of the greatest challenges of human existence. Let me say this. It is natural and human to feel pain. Grief and sadness in the face of life's difficulties. These emotions are part of the rich tapestry of human experience, and there is no shame in feeling them. The control of your feelings does not mean becoming an unfeeling automaton. However, even in our darkest moments, we have a choice. We can choose to dwell in our pain, to let it define us and shape our future, or we can choose to find within ourselves the strength, the resilience, the faith to move through our pain towards a higher state. Remember, my friends, that every experience, no matter how painful, contains within it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. Your job, as a conscious creator of your reality, is to find that seed and nurture it. This doesn't mean denying your pain or pretending it doesn't exist. It means acknowledging your feelings, honoring them, but not letting them become your permanent dwelling place. In times of difficulty, turn to your imagination. Use it to create a vision of healing, of growth, of transformation. Feel the reality of that vision. Let it be your beacon, guiding you through the storm of your present circumstances. But remember, what you're feeling now is creating your future. Even in your darkest hour, you have the power to plant the seeds of a brighter tomorrow. This ability to choose your emotional response especially in challenging circumstances, is perhaps the greatest freedom we possess as human beings. It is the essence of what the great psychiatrist Viktor Frankl called the last of human freedom, the ability to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. As you develop this emotional mastery, you'll find that you become more resilient, more adaptable to life's changes. You'll be less reactive to external events, more centered in your own inner stability. This doesn't mean you won't face challenges or experience negative emotions. But it does mean that you'll be able to move through these experiences more gracefully, always returning to your chosen emotional state. Now let us address another crucial aspect of controlling your feelings. The role of self-concept. Your self-concept, the image you hold of yourself in your mind, 
is intimately tied to your emotional state. In fact, your habitual feelings are largely a reflection of your self-concept. If you see yourself as unworthy, as a victim of circumstances, as someone who always struggles, then these beliefs will color your emotional landscape. You find it difficult to maintain positive feeling states because they'll feel incongruent with your self-image. This is why any lasting change in your life must begin with a change in your self-concept. You must dare to see yourself differently, to assume a new identity aligned with your desires. This is not about ego or arrogance. It's about recognizing and embodying your true divine nature as a creative being. Spend time each day imagining yourself as the person you want to be. Feel the emotions that this version of you would feel. How would you carry yourself? How would you speak? How would you react to challenges? Live from this new self-concept. And you'll find that positive emotions flow more naturally. That your desired reality begins to feel more and more natural. As we near the conclusion of our discourse, my dear friends, I want to emphasize a point of utmost importance. The control of your feelings, this great secret to a full and happy life, is not a destination but a journey. It is a practice, a way of living that you must commit to day after day, moment after moment. There will be times when you falter, when old patterns of thought and emotion reassert themselves. This is natural and to be expected. The key is not to berate yourself for these moments, but to gently and persistently return to your chosen state. Each time you do this, you strengthen your ability to control your feelings. You reinforce the neural pathways of your new emotional habits. Remember, my beloved listeners, that you are embarking on a profound transformation. You are literally rewiring your brain, reshaping your perception of reality, altering the very fabric of your existence. This is no small undertaking. And it requires patience, persistence, and above all, self-compassion. Be kind to yourself as you practice this emotional mastery. Celebrate your successes, no matter how small they may seem. Did you manage to shift your mood from frustration to calm? That's a victory. Did you catch yourself in a negative thought pattern and consciously choose a more empowering perspective? That's progress. Each of these moments is a step towards mastery towards the full and happy life that is your birthright. As we come to the close of our time together, I want to leave you with a final thought. The control of your feelings is not just a technique for manifesting your desires or improving your life circumstances. It is, at its core, a spiritual practice. It is a way of aligning yourself with the creative power of the universe, of recognizing and embodying your true divine nature, when you master your emotions, when you consciously choose the feeling states that serve your highest good, you are participating in the grand dance of creation. You are fulfilling your role as a co-creator with the divine, shaping your reality in accordance with your deepest desires and highest aspirations. This, my friends, is the true secret to a full and happy life. It is the recognition that your happiness, your fulfillment, your success, all of these are not external conditions to be achieved, but internal states to be assumed and embodied. They're your natural birthright, available to you here and now, if only you dare to claim them. So go for it, my dear listeners, armed with this profound truth. Take control of your feelings. Shape your emotional landscape with conscious intent. Let every thought, every feeling be in alignment with your desires, with the highest version of yourself. Live from the end, persist in your assumptions and watch as the world reshapes itself. Remember the powers within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. All that you seek, all the love, all the abundance, all the joy, it is already yours. Your task is simply to feel it, to know it, to live it. Do this, and you will unlock the secret to a truly full and happy life. Thank you, my beloved friends, for your attention, for your openness to these transformative truths. May you go forth and create lives of unimaginable beauty, abundance, and joy. For truly, the world is yours, and you are the master of your destiny. God bless you all.